In this video, I'm going to tell you about area vectors. So thinking back to uh, 114, one of the things that you learned very early on is that in physics we have two main kinds of quantities. We have scalars, and vectors. And of course the difference between scalars and vectors is that scalars are just an amount which we sometimes call a magnitude where vectors have both an amount and a direction. And there are a lot of examples of both that you've learned in your time taking physics. So um, something that we express just as a simple amount would be, for instance, a mass or a distance or a temperature. It's just a number. Um, there's no direction associated with it. Um, meanwhile, for vectors, we have things like velocities, which have both the amount of speed that you have and the direction that you are traveling. Um, so really all of the quantities we've learned can be classified as one or the other of these two things. Um, you may or may not be surprised to learn that there are actually other more complicated quantities possible. So um, for example, um, we have quantities called tensors, which are um, an amount and they're associated with more than one direction. So for instance, and amount and two directions. Or if you wanted to think of it this way, um, tensors can represent a pair of vectors or three vectors. So um, sometimes we end up having to resort to using these more complicated quantities. Um, Rest assured, we're not actually going to end up using tensors here, but I think it's a useful tool for understanding what sort of information we can get from area vectors. Okay, so the idea behind area vectors is we have an area, okay? Just an ordinary two-dimensional um, shape, let's say a rectangle like this, which I'm drawing in perspective. Okay, and to indicate that this is a rectangle, I'll put the little 90 degree symbols in the corners. Also in perspective. And um, this shape we could represent with an area. Okay, so if I just gave you an area scalar, um, then we could represent that as just being the length times the width um, being equal to that area scalar. Okay, So that's the normal way to think about area. Um, we haven't really given any reason up to this point that you should think an area should have a direction associated with it. But we could associate some directions with an area. So for example, imagine that I wanted to distinguish this area that I just drew from the same thing turned sideways. Okay, so perhaps I have a rectangle now like this. Okay, still 90 degree corners. And let's assume that the dimensions are the same, so same length, same width. But now we have it turned sideways. Well, that is a different shape. I mean, it's the same basic shape, but it's in a different orientation. So we can make a distinction between these things. So the question then is, how can we go about um, representing that difference? Okay, and one totally reasonable way to go would be to say, well, maybe we jump straight to a tensor. And by using a pair of vectors, we can say, all right, I'm going to call this side the length L vector. 
and this side I'll call a width vector. Okay, so now we have a length and a width. And if we have a length and a width, um, we can calculate the area. So we still have that information that the scalar gave us. But now we have a little bit more information because we can tell how these things are oriented. Okay, so for instance, maybe in this case, I have a length here. And it could be the same. And I have a width down here. Okay. So if I wanted to do that, then that would be a thing I could do. So I'm going to call this an area tensor. Um, and that's got a lot more information. So somehow in this tensor, I would tell you both the length and the width. Okay, but it turns out that that's not necessary. So um, we can represent this exact rectangle with a tensor, and we can represent just the amount of area with a scalar, but there's an in-between. Okay, so we skipped over an area vector, and the question that I want to think about now is what information can I represent with just one vector about this surface? Okay, so can I somehow distinguish these two without having to give both the length vector and the width vector, which seems like a lot of extra information, can I represent it as just one vector? And the answer is yes. So um, the area vector is going to contain the information that's in the area scalar. So the um, amount, the magnitude, is going to be equal to the area. Okay, so unsurprisingly, we're going to stick with that idea. But the, um, the direction of this will let us distinguish between these two. Now, you run into a little bit of trouble um, if you try to think of um, what is the most sensible direction to use. Okay, so for now, I'm going to put just a question mark here and we'll think about what we could do. Okay, so let's say that I have um, an area, and I'll draw a new one now, um, so we can kind of clean this up a little bit. So I've got this area, it's a rectangle, um, and let's say that I, for my area vector, I just tried to pick a vector that's in the plane. Okay, so I did, let's say, an uh, area vector that was along one side. So maybe I use the same direction as the length vector that I had before, but now that's going to give me um, the direction of my area vector. Well, that doesn't actually help us distinguish between these two cases that we had before, because <clears throat> up here I had a length vector this way, and here I have a length vector basically the same direction, but I can move this rectangle around, so if I lower this part down, then it ends up looking like this. Okay, so I don't want that. That doesn't help me distinguish between the two cases I was interested in distinguishing between. Okay, so if I just did like this and I moved the, um, the rectangle, but I kept it through this vector, well, then this doesn't really give me what I want. So that isn't, that isn't really satisfactory. All right, so what can we do instead? I want a vector direction that's going to be able to tell the difference between these two guys. Well, it turns out that there is a sensible choice. So rather than trying to use the um, vector that is, or any vector that's in the plane of the area, we're going to choose a vector that's perpendicular. Okay, so for this one, and I'll use my perpendicular symbol here, that area is in this direction. And I could do an area for this one, oops, that isn't very good, like this, that is in this direction. Okay, so if I pick an area that's perpendicular to the, um, the surfaces, well, then I actually can tell the difference between the two cases. Okay, so this will actually end up being what we want. Um, we want an area um, vector that has an amount that's equal to the area and a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so let me get rid of my question mark and replace it with the correct answer. Um, the direction is equal to perpendicular 
to the surface. All right, so that has more information than our area scalar did because our area scalar just told us how much area. So now we can tell which direction they are, but it has less information in it than our area tensor. Um, in particular, we don't really know what shape this area is anymore. Um, I drew a rectangle, but there's no reason it needs to be a rectangle. And I don't know if it has, like maybe it's a square or maybe its length is much bigger than its width. I don't have any of that information. Okay, and it'll turn out that we won't need that information either. Okay, so um, if I have the same area vector, that could represent multiple different shapes. Okay, so if I have an area vector like this, redrawn the same area vector three times. Uh, remember, vectors don't have a location. They just have a magnitude and a direction. Um, so in my first case, I drew this as a rectangle. OK, and maybe it is. Or perhaps it's a circle. Again, drawn foreshortened. Um, or maybe it's some weird shape. I don't know. Like maybe it's something kind of squiggly. Okay. Also fine. Um, all that matters is that it has the same area in each of these cases. And the uh, area vector is perpendicular to the surface in all of the cases. Okay, that's it. Um, so there's one last detail, which is I haven't given you any reason to think that the area vector should be pointing in the way I drew it versus um, in the completely opposite direction. Okay, so still perpendicular to the surface, but pointing down. And it turns out that either of these are perfectly good choices for now. Okay, so this one also could be the area vector, area vector. I'll call it area vector prime. Um, the same size, but opposite direction. Either of those would define the same area. It turns out in a little bit we'll have a reason to pick one over the other, but for now you just pick one and then stay consistent.